Texturing is the art of creating and applying an image to the outside of the model. The texture of the model determines what the model looks like and how light interacts with the surface. Is it shiny? Is it dull? Is it rough? Is it smooth? Etc. In this video, we will explore creating simple materials in the Slate Material Editor and applying them to our objects. We can change the color of an object through the Modify tab. This is not a material. A material is created and assigned to an object in the Material Editor. If not already open, open your file from the last video. Save your file as Max Introduction First Initial Last Name 004. Press M or click the Material Editor icon in the main toolbar to open the Material Editor. There are two flavors of Material Editor in 3ds Max. The Slate Material Editor and the Compact Material Editor. They both do the same thing, just slightly differently. We will be using the Slate Material Editor, a node-based graphical way to create materials. A material determines many aspects of the model. For instance, what color is the object? This is called the diffuse. How does the light bounce off the object? This is called the specularity. Is it smooth or is it rough? And much more are determined by the material applied to the object. The Slate Material Editor is divided into three columns. The Material Map Browser on the left. Depending on what rendering engine is being used, some materials or maps may not always be available. Maps are images that are applied to materials. Materials are applied to the objects. The View or Work Area in the center, where the material will be constructed using an input-output node system. To the right is the Navigator, an overview of the work area. Below that, the Material Parameter Editor, where the parameters of the active material can be edited. Across the top are drop-down menus and an icon toolbar. Hover over the tool to see its name. To create a basic texture, do the following. In the Material Browser, expand Materials, Scan Line, and drag a standard material into the work area. Double-click the Material Header to make it the active material. A dotted line will appear around the material to indicate it is the active material. Its properties are now shown in the Material Parameter Editor. These parameters will change depending on what is selected in the work area. At the top is a text box for naming the material. It's important to name your materials logically. Below that, in the Shader Basic Parameters rollout, there are a number of shaders available in Max. A shader controls how light interacts with the material. For now, leave this to the default. Next to that are four tick boxes that modify how the material will render. By default, Max only applies the material to one side of the polygons that make up the surface of an object. With the teapot, this can cause issues with being able to see through the teapot and with shadows. By ticking the two-sided option, the material will be applied to both sides of the polygon, solving the problem. Below are the parameters for the default blend shader. Clicking the color swatch next to the diffuse sets the base color of the object. We will learn how to apply images to the diffuse in future lessons. The specular is the highlight from the light source. Specular level and glossiness control how intense the highlight is. As a rule, harder objects have a higher specular level and glossiness. Opacity controls the transparency of the material. 100% opacity and the object cannot be seen through. 0% opacity and the object is invisible. The material is represented in the work area with inputs down the left and an output node on the right. One way to apply a material is to drag from the output on the right to the object in the 3D viewport. Another way to apply the texture is to select the object in the 3D viewport have the correct material active in the Slate Material Editor, and click the Apply Material to Selected Object icon in the Material Editor toolbar.